in the first drawer of the second row, we're still going alphabetically and we've got the S's dominating this particular row. I think there might be a couple of R's in there. A couple of issues of The Savage Shores, which was a series I really enjoyed the first two issues of, but have been waiting to get my hands on the trade collection, so I haven't read the full story yet. Here are a couple of the R's. This is Jeff Smith's Razzle, which is a great science fiction story, which I originally read in the larger sized uh, trade paperback collections. There are four of those, I think. I didn't know they were available in this single issue format. I decided to take a look. I got a couple of issues, but then decided that I really like them in that larger format. They're both in black and white, which I think I prefer to the recolored edition, which is also pretty good. Then we have some issues of Solo from DC Comics, a series of comics uh, that I really enjoyed each issue spotlighting a creator working by themselves. Similar to Razzle, I got this in the collected edition first, the deluxe hardcover, and really enjoyed it. But when the opportunity came to pick up a few of these single issues, I, I went for it because I like this individual spotlight series and I think the individual issues are a great way uh, to read these stories. In an anthology, one thing leads to another and it can be a little jarring if they're different takes on uh, very different subject matters like these are. So I picked up most of these in single format because I think in spite of the deluxe hardcover being uh, a deluxe hardcover, uh, this particular series really benefits from reading it piece by piece. This one, I think, is one of my favorites. Then we have a couple of issues of Serenity. I enjoyed the TV show Firefly, and I was glad to see the story of these characters continue in the comics. The comics obviously don't have the same charm as the TV show, but maybe mainly for fans who want to see more of these quite interesting and fun uh, to spend time with characters. From something that may only be for fans to something that I think everyone should read, Sparks is a great comic. I made a video on this, perhaps the best comic you've never heard of. This is subtitled An Urban Fairy Tale and is just superb comics. Check out that video if you're interested in a look at this. Then we get to Spider-Man, uh, who I'm a big fan of. This is, uh, again, a comic I have made a video on, my quintessential Spider-Man story. And then the issues of Spider-Man Blue. We saw Daredevil Yellow, the above shelf, and Spider-Man Blue is another collaboration by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale that I really enjoy. This miniseries also works really well reading chapter by chapter. Uh, then some random issues of Spider-Man that I have picked up over the years. Things that I decided to try out for their creators. And standalone stories that were recommended to me by friends. A couple of issues of uh, the 1980s New Adventures of Superboy, which I really enjoyed reading growing up and I was happy to see as held up. I think these are terrific adventure stories for all ages. They span like a variety of genres while being very quintessentially superhero stories, so I wish there was an easy to find collection of these stories. Another Loeb sale collaboration. Superman for All Seasons may be my favorite collaboration of theirs. I think of the Marvel ones, it's Spider-Man Blue. The DC ones have better books in my opinion and lots of them, so uh, it's a tough choice. Superman Red Sun. This is a three issue series that I really enjoyed. And then we have Soft Boy by Archer Pruitt. I have only ever seen these three issues. I don't think more were published. It's a very unique and odd series, not for all tastes. My wife uh, is kind of creeped out uh, by these comics, but I find them to have quite a unique power. A couple of issues of Superman. This makes up that last Superman story Alan Moore did, Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. And then some random issues of BPRD, some issues of the new adventures of the spirit done by a who's who of creators, as well as some issues of Darwin Cook's reboot of the spirit, and the issues of Pacific Comics that collected the original run of the Rocketeer. I got the deluxe edition, but I was a little disappointed in the colors. I really like the original colors, which is why I chose to get the Rocketeer in singles. This shelf is a little emptier than usual because I've taken out the Sandman and put it on the bookshelves and this is about where I'd want them to come to any more than it becomes hard to flip through them and it becomes more like storage than a library. So I guess I have a little bit more space at least in this shelf. 
These are issues of the Swamp Thing. This is the Alan Moore run. I have all but two issues of this run, the one where Constantine first appears and the one where he has a cameo appearance. Since those are collector's items, they're much harder to find and much more expensive, but the rest of these were surprisingly easy to get. And this is one of those things that I bought purely as an experiment. I wanted to read this fantastic series, which I really, really love. It's one of my favorite series of all time. I wanted to put myself in the shoes of the people who read it uh, first when it was coming out, waiting month to month. And I really love everything about the experience of reading them like this. So all of this is Swamp Thing. And then there's more Alan Moore in the form of top 10. This is both of the series collected over here. One of my favorite Alan Moore series and its spin-off Smacks, which I also enjoyed. Although probably not as much as I enjoyed top 10. And then we have Stray Bullets. For the longest time, Stray Bullets uh, trades were almost impossible to get. So the single issues were the way that I had to read the story. This is before that giant compendium volume was published. And I slowly collected all 40 issues of Stray Bullets. It took me more than a couple of years, but this is an excellent series and I'm very glad that I got to read them in this way. And while I did get that compendium because I thought it would be easier to read than fishing out a, a single issue or five of this series, I find that this is still my favorite way to read this series. A lot of these are standalone stories. Some of them are two or three issue arcs. Of course, the larger universe ties together, but this is just one of those brilliant series that one should read in any way possible. And this was the way that I found and I'm very glad for it. And after Stray Bullets at the end over here, we have some random uh, Star Wars issues because they were done by Matt Kint that I picked up to see if I enjoyed them. And then a few issues of The Sixth Gun, a series that I quite enjoyed when I read it. I read, I think, the first 12 issues of it, but I wasn't enamored enough with it to continue, and especially not at the prices for those uh, deluxe hardcovers that came out, which seemed to be the only way once I'd come back from my travels and didn't have access to single issues anymore. Maybe I'll pick this up again one day, who knows? More Sixth Gun. And then right at the end, there are issues of the Umbrella Academy, which again was far easier to get in singles uh, rather than trades when I was looking for them some years ago. Of course, now there are nice hardcover deluxe editions, but I think the irreverent nature of this may work better in the single issues than in a very worshipful uh, hardcover deluxe edition. At least that was my first impression from reading the hardcovers. And that's it for this shelf moving right along. The second drawer of the second row has really only one word associated with it, and that is Usagi, because this drawer is full of Usagi Ojimbo. I actually introduced myself to Usagi Ojimbo by reading the single issues because I picked up issue numbers one through 10 on an eBay auction for uh, quite a reasonable price. And that got me hooked and I sought out more. The trade paperbacks and collections again were hard to find. So I actually pursued them in single issues, including issues of other titles in which Usagi had appeared. So over here, I've got a couple of the Albedo issues, not his first appearance in Albedo too, which is near impossible to get one's hands on. There's an Usagi story in this issue of Doomsday Squad and then issues of Critters. Again, I'm missing Critters number one, but otherwise I think I've got all of the issues of Critters in which Usagi makes an appearance. Critters was an anthology series published by Fantagraphics, which contained other comics other than Usagi and sometimes had issues in which Usagi stories didn't feature. But I think Usagi is really the cream of the crop over there. Critters, Critters. And then the three series of Space Usagi, which is a very fun take on Usagi by writer artist Stan Sakai. And it's been published by three different publishers when Usagi was was with them as a tangential series. Each series of Space Usagi is made up of three issues, so, so nine of them cover all the Space Usagi there is. A color special, more Space Usagi, and here's the, the rest of the Fantagraphic series that I picked up as part of the lot, as well as what I continued after that. 
So all of this is Fantagraphics, which I have a video on, uh, Usagi Yojimbo, The Earliest Stories. And then we have 16 issues of well, something maybe I should make a video on the Mirage Comics run of 16 issues, which were in full color. And as far as I know, until IDW reprints them with recoloring, this is the only place you can read these stories in original colors because all other collections publish them in black and white. And then right at the end over here are some issues of Saga, which I collected the first 40 issues of, I think. That little bit of Saga is the only exception to Usagi Ojimbo because all of this is now Usagi Ojimbo from Dark Horse. I was very impatient waiting for the collected editions and the smaller collected editions never came to India. And it was easier for me to just get batches of this shipped to me because eBay lots of uh, current issues were quite reasonably priced. So I ended up collecting, I don't know, like about 200 issues of Usagi Ojimbo uh, in the Dark Horse run as well. Short but sweet. And this third drawer is the hardest of the drawers to make a video on uh, because of its placing, the problem with lighting, so on and so forth. But also because it's a very random collection of comics, this being the last drawer of this size, it ends up having a lot of extra stuff. Uh, people send me stuff alongside things that I buy from them. There are impulse buys that I haven't completed or even things that I'm looking to sell or trade away. But it also contains some big names like the issues of Watchmen. I love of Watchmen. I've made a number of videos on Watchmen and I like it in the original single issue form as well. Then some random issues of Jupiter Circle, Lucifer. Here is an interesting anthology series by Fantagraph Express. What not would be a sort of underground comic by 70s terms and contains a number of uh, creators who I was introduced to in other works and found them all collected in anthologies like this and some others we'll see. This is a Teen Titans story that I read when I was younger and really enjoyed. So I actually sought it out in single issue form. It's one of those things you buy to recapture the magic of your childhood. An old Shazam comic that I found quite cheap. A comic celebrating the works of J.J. Granville, on whose works Brian Talbot has based the art style of Granville. Bob Burden's Robot Comics. And then we have some Amy Racecar from the Stray Bullets world. One of the Battling Boy singles. As I said, pretty random stuff. This is Mechanics from the Love and Rockets world from Jaime's side, early stories. Twilight Children by Gilbert Hernandez and Darwin Cook. Then some random issues of Fables. More Bob Burden, Gumby, written by Bob Burden, but drawn by my favorite Rick Geary. And then comes the heavy hitter in this drawer, Uncle Scrooge. I've tried to find as many Karl Barks original comics as I can, irrespective of the condition, which include these issues of Uncle Scrooge, some of which are in great shape. It doesn't matter what the condition, I just wanted to read these old original comics because I love Uncle Scrooge so much. And it's not just the Dell comics, but I also have gold key reprints in here. Although it seems to be mainly the Dell comics on this side of things, as well as Whitman comics and issues of Walt Disney comics, which featured other Bark stories, not just Uncle Scrooge ones, but mainly Uncle Scrooge all the way back here. And there are some Gladstone issues in here as well. As for the other side, how am I going to show things to you? And it's so tightly packed. Here are some issues of the Max. In one of my videos, I talked about how volume five of the IDW hardcovers was unavailable. So I've actually managed to get all the singles or maybe all the singles bar one that make up volume five. So I've been able to continue reading the Max. Random Spider-Man, random Spawn, random Archie. These are all things I've picked up very randomly like at Comic-Con Delhi. Here we have issues of Zap comics by Robert Crumb. Oh, and also X-Men. I seem to have my X's and Z's all mixed together. In any case, Zap by Robert Crumb. I think I have from issue zero to issue seven or eight. Also Raw Volume 2, including serialization of Mouse. A Richard Sala comic I showed in my Richard Sala Spotlight. 
And then another anthology comic series from Fantagraphics. This is Zero Zero. Even more than uh, what not, Zero Zero featured a terrific roster of writers and artists in alternative indie comics. And I love reading these issues of Zero Zero because they give me a sort of parallel picture to what else was going on in comics apart from the stuff that I know more about, like superhero stuff from Marvel or DC or even Image and Dark Horror. This is stuff that Fantagraphics and Drawn and Quarterly, publishers like that, what were they doing in the 80s and 90s is something I really like digging into through comics like this. Among many other things, these contain serialization of Richard Sala stories, which is how I first discovered them. Then a couple of issues of Wally Wood I picked up from a comic book store in my travels. Uh, never pass up Wally Wood if you can find him. Grant Morrison's V3. And then the rest of it is Scott McCloud's Zot. I love Zot as a series. I have the collected black and white series, but issues one through 10 were in color and were sort of soft rebooted from number 11 onwards. I like having the first 10, but I also like like reading the whole story in this slightly larger format that Omnibus, although great for people to get introduced or to become aware of this terrific series, although that's great, I really like the full size reading experience of this very unique series. Whether or not you can get your hands on this, I would strongly recommend you check out Zot by Scott McCloud. And that's it for this.